will stand. The court finds that you and Nancy Manigo did on the ninth day of September, willfully and with malice aforethought, kill and murder the infant child of Mr. and Mrs. Gowan Stevens in the town of Jefferson County of York, Napatoffa. Have you anything to say before judgment is pronounced upon you? It is the sentence of this court, then, that you be taken back to the county jail in York, Napatoffa County. And there, on the 13th day of March, you will be hanged by the neck until you are dead. May God have mercy upon your soul. I will be done. Thank you, Lord. Hi, how come you didn't get a tan while you were in Bermuda? Oh, Gowan wouldn't let me. Has a has a fixation about my skin. Says the sun would coarsen it. Gowan, he's crazy. Yes, he is. He's always telling me how to vest and how to. Evening, Ira. Ira. Hello, Ira. Hello, Ira. Welcome home, Temple. Thank you. Gowan, Ira. I got fix cousin Ira a drink. Yeah, Ira, have a drink. What'll it be? What's that? Orange blossoms, straight grain and juice. Got any whiskey? Anything for you, Ira boy? We're well, glad you dropped by, aren't we, Temple? Oh, of course. As we want you to know, there's no hard feelings, none whatsoever. You had a job to do, and you did it. Public defender. That's something every lawyer has to take on sometime. Afraid I didn't do it very well. You tried. If you'd have gotten her off, it might have been another story. Gowan, please. Oh, sorry, honey. Sure, it's just that justice was done, that's all. Don't you mean will be done? Lancer hangs in the morning. Hey, host. Got, got to drive. Come in. You came all the way back from Bermuda? Almost without notice. Have you seen her? Almost every day. Does she talk about me? No. Then why have you come here? Same reason you came back from Bermuda. Well, 
What do you know? That a man was there with you when it happened. No. Maybe about three Campbell, times. sweetie. And we've been chasing this We've got to go. Three Thanks. Hours. Oh, good. Good to be back. Bye-bye. And we lost the scent. <laughs> well, we looked on both sides. <laughs> and what else? You can still save her. You think I wouldn't if I could? You know the price. I have the faintest idea what you're talking about. Here's my number, in case you change your mind. How about another drink, Ira? Uh, no, thanks. Well, I gotta be going. Good night. Good night, Ira. Let me just take a look at it. Well, it's not gonna start, Gown, I don't think. Oh, you disgusting. Well, I only had a little bit. Honey. Yeah? What's the matter with Randy's car? I'm gonna drive him home. Oh, are you all right? You want me to come with you? No, I'll be back in a while. Good night. Well, good night, I'll send you back. Bye. Six, three. I'm not going to call Ira. I don't know what happened that night, and nobody else is going to, ever. Guy, when I have to do something. If Nancy won't say anything in her own defense, why should you? But you know this is why I wanted to come back from Bermuda. I have to try. All right, then, you try. But I'm telling you that if you go see Ira, don't you expect me to be here when you come back? I'm warning you. Temple, please. Please. I want four dice, seven, six, three. If you want to save her, you'll have to do it my way. Look, all we need is an affidavit. That she's crazy, has been for years. It's too late for affidavits. Insanity, please. You could have brought that up at the trial, and you didn't. Say one word. Lift one finger, make one motion in her defense. How much do I have to tell him? Only the true part. God, why must it be him? Why must it be my father? Because the governor of this state is the only man who can grant her a reprieve. Stay of execution. A chance for a new trial.
Temple, honey, welcome home. Hi, Daddy. You all right? Oh, yes, I'm fine. Where's God? He's home. He's fine. Mm-hmm. Ira? I hope my call didn't wake you, Governor. Not at all. These days, living alone, I seem to keep later hours. I guess I have about the same situation, sir. You ought to get married, Ira, while you're still young. I'm afraid I'm a confirmed bachelor. Until the right woman comes along, hmm? Daddy, Ira, let's get on with it. Why, of course. Uh, sit down. From your call, I gather this is about the colored woman, the murderess, Nancy. Yes, sir. You defended her and lost. Have you come now to uh, ask me to pardon her? Uh, Daddy, it's a little more complicated. Because if you have, you've come a little late. And you have come to a chair that is more than partial to her lawful execution. I'm quite aware of that, Governor. The child was my grandson. Why do you pull her into it at this time? I'm not fully. Or at all. Daddy, I'm in it. And not just at this time, but all the time. In up to my neck. Yes, of course you were involved, but that's Daddy, mean. please. We've... I... I have come to ask you to save her. Why? Because she was crazy. Why can't I stop lying? Temple, baby, it's all right. You're distraught, and I understand that. You don't understand anything. You're good and sweet and dear. And, and my father. But you don't understand any one damn thing that's got any one damn connection with me, because I don't think I've stopped lying to you from the time I was born. So I think you better listen close, Daddy, while I tell you the whole story. The, the, the true story, all of it. Because Nancy's a part of it. So now, first. First about Gowan. You were asking me, who was he, this, this boy I was going to the dance with? I even remember what I was wearing, that red fringe dress, standing right there in that doorway. Gowan? Oh, he's just another boy, Daddy. But he's terribly attractive, terribly reliable, and terribly much the gentleman. He graduated from the University of Virginia. Bye-bye. Just who do you think you're kidding? Kidding? Why, Gowan? Temple, when are we going to have that dance? Oh, why, soon, honey, real soon. That's a promise now. Oh, you know I always keep my promises. It's up to me. Now, come on, let's get out of here. Oh, he's so masterful. I put everything in the back of the car. Blanket, bucket of ice, big troller, stack of new Whiteman records. Where are we going? Other side of the lake. Mind telling me why? Because, my little sweet, 
This scene is entitled, The Seduction of Miss Temple Drake. Oh, hum. Stop it. Temple. Gowan, I'm telling you. Temple, please. I thought you were supposed to be a gentleman. I am a gentleman. Then stop it. You mean that? Yes, I mean it. All right. When the honey is I hot. said, all right. Oh, now after all that champagne, don't tell me you're going to start on the hard stuff. A toast to the honor and glory of Southern womanhood. To the two Miss Temple Drakes. You know, you're kind of confusing from the anthrop <coughs> anthropological point of view. See, here we got uh, Miss Vestal Virgin, the governor's daughter, all that on the one hand. And on the other hand, we have Tarred Temple, Princess of the Promise in Love. Which is the real Temple Drake? Don, I have to get back to the sorority house. Would you bring the Victrola? Oh, she promiseth and she promiseth. But she cometh not across. Hey, look at that red dress. Oh, it shimmies, it wiggles. Like a bowl of jelly on a plate. Gown, you're really not being very funny. The fact is, Princess, you're every worst kind of teaser. Don't you ever call me that. So to continue, now we come to the overwhelming question. Why do I, knowing who and what you are, stick around? Huh? Gowan, you forgot the victory. Stick around, slobbering and drooling like all those other frustrated hound dogs you got baying at your <laughs> princessly heels. The answer evades me. Unless... Unless it is that I'm hopelessly in love with you. Which happens to be the case. on the road. I wish you'd stop interrupting me. I don't know if you're lost or what, but this is not the way back to school. This is the secret route to the secret ancestral home of York Nopatofa County Corn Liquor. I'm not going any moonshiners. We have played things your way, Princess. We will now play things mine. Shut up. Let me handle this. <coughs> My good man, we're looking for Lee's place. You shouldn't have hit the tree. <laughs> what? I said that you shouldn't have hit the tree. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot. Now, listen. Are you Lee? Uh. Coming? Or do you want to sit up here in the woods?
show me your telephone. Who is it? Who are you? Name's Joe. And? I got the ready. You got the stuff? Well, come on, come on. Are we going to do business or not? Joe, huh? You heard me. Very unusual name. Want a drink? That's what we're here for. This young lady too? I don't drink. How much? No charge. Pay the man. Honey, don't insult our host. Pay the man and let's go. Um, do you have a telephone I could use? No phone. Candy. Um, I don't suppose you'd have a car I could borrow. And my father's chauffeur could return it the minute I get home. Your father's chauffeur, huh? Uh-huh. No, I ain't got no car. Not here. Well, now, if you don't have a phone so I can hire me a taxi, and if you can't or won't lend me a car, then how do you propose we get out of this charming place? <laughs> Won't you hurry? He ain't no hurry. I kid, huh? Take it easy, huh? your name, Candy? It's what they call me. Um, that truckload of bootleg gone into town, could that give us a lift? You know better than that, lady. Your accent, that's real French Cajun, isn't it? Yeah. You from the Bayou country? Mm-hmm. You're not very what one would call gallant, are you? Candy. Isn't that a girl's name? My friend in there can be gallant as I'll get out. But then he's from the University of Virginia. That's his school. What's your school, Mr. Candy? Keep it up. The subject has already begun to bore me. She one of his? I ain't never seen her before. If she was, I'd buy. <laughs> All you college boys are drinking, man. <laughs> right, college boys? <laughs> right. <laughs> Go on, sit down there. Let me see you do that again. Life. Ain't no place to raise a child. Gowan! Gowan! Yes, sir. That was a drinking man. Come with me. Come on. Wow. 
mail. You can stay in here, but there ain't no lock on the door. Well, that's interesting. Listen, you listen to me, little girl. And you watch your mouth. I know you. I know you kind. I've known you all my life. But that dress and the way you shake it and that perfume. You think those are boys down there? Oh, it's trash. I know trash. They'll be up. Won't be able to do a thing to stop them. They'll be after you just like dogs. Those aren't little college boys downstairs, miss. Drake. The name is Temple Drake, and I can look after myself. That's the way you want it. I warned you. Oh, I'd sooner sleep in a star. Stevens, I get my hands on you. Get out of here. I was just wondering, was there something I could bring you, ma'am? Some comfort? Glass of water? Get out of here. Only want to please. I mean it. Oh, now, miss. If you would kindly leave. It's time. They're ready to roll. All right. Wildcat. Help yourself. Now do you believe me? Come on, you've got to leave. You go down them stairs and start out the same way Dog Boy brought you in. And don't you stop for nothing. Aren't they leaving now? Me and those other two are, but not Candy. And if he takes it in his head, he put his hand on well, you. Well, he's not going to. Now listen, little girl. You don't know nothing about the Candy Man. He'll have you crawling on all fours and howling like a dog. Now get out of here. Get out of here. Uh, they took in your friend. Callan? Uh, they threw him on truck and took him away with them. Uh, you all better come along with me. Where are we going? I hired you. I know a real good place.
that man. Well, I'll tell Candy that you run on. Some time, boy. Where's Temple? Here you go. What have you done with her? <laughs> Not a thing in the world. <laughs> Is she all right? Well, sure she's all right. She got to a phone last night and called her father to come pick her up. Her father? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Is her old man mad at you? <laughs> boy, I'd stay away from them for a while if I was you. <laughs> Do you want to have something hot in your stomach? A cup of coffee, touch off, right? Come on, child. Morning, ladies. You want some eggs? No. I'll wait till you get to town. Here's your coffee. Thanks. She makes a good pot of java. Try it. to be that way, kid. Go on, drink it. Kid. <laughs> we can't be calling you that, can we? What's your real name? Pepper. There's a name for you. Good name, Pepper. Where do you live, Pepper? New Orleans? We are going to New Orleans. Be glad to give you a lift. Take my little baby to the doctor. Sure you are. This ain't no place for a sick baby. Sick baby? Sick junkie, you mean? <laughs> See how Nancy has got herself a habit. A bad, bad habit. She tried living out here, away from temptation. But it wasn't far enough. It ain't no place far enough. You coming? She'll come. I got to get to Miss Rivers. We can't take her there until she feels like making up her mind what she's going to do. Miss Reba will raise a ruckus. Not with me, she wouldn't. I've been like a son to that sweet old lady. Cat got your tongue, honey. She's tired. Nancy! You just unlax yourself. Pretty little thing like you. Nancy, take her up the front spare room. You gotta be vivacious to hold a man like Candy, you hear? Now let's have it. The whole thing.
Pepper. How are you doing, Pepper? Scared? You've got the candy man here. To protect you. Honey, you're shivering. learning what it was like at last to be with a real man. A man whose gentleness that night became even more overwhelming than his violence. Next morning, I woke to a different world of, of gin for breakfast, of flashy pants and negligees the candy bought me, of hours alone or with Nancy, holding a private fashion show before my mirror. That dingy little room of Miss Reba's became for me a sanctuary of sin and pleasure. Holy cow! Only one thing hadn't changed about me. My lion. Uh, Miss Thornton, uh, this is Temple. Oh, I know you must be. Well, see, I would have called sooner, but... My daddy had this real sudden attack. Oh, no, no. Oh, praise the Lord, it's nothing really serious. But what with all the excitement and running up and down, well, you know, I just couldn't get to the phone. Well, I certainly will. And I please you, just don't worry about a thing. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Here and there, I think you'd do. On a dark night. You've been drinking. <laughs> Jean, I thought you didn't touch the stuff. Mm, there have been some changes made. Mm -hmm. Speaking of changes. Hey. Put it on. Oh, you going to take me out? Yeah. Where? Downstairs. With those trams? Not my baby. You stay strictly away from them. Get that very, very straight. All right, Candy. Uh, turn your back. Candy, I said, turn your back. Nice. 
Nancy says you have a speakeasy. I own a blind pig. Not like this. I see you have one like this. Ten like this. You've been hitting the gym pretty hard for a beginner, baby. Oh, well, I learn fast. You sure do. <laughs> That's one thing. When we're out, you act like a lady. Sit down. Oh, oh my. I've been acting like a lady all my life, Candy. This has been my trouble. Where's my drink? Oh, gee. You showed me something. You know, it's like this dress. What's wrong with that dress? It's very demure. Very. But underneath, it's got... Red silk underwear, old transparent secret. I like secret things, Candy. Wild, crazy things. You're acting like a tramp. Stop it. Hi, Candy. Hi, Mac. Okay to talk? Oh, talk, talk, talk. talk. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Thursday night, eight cases of gin. Ten each, scotch and bourbon. You get it. And candy. Watch it, will you? The feds are on to you. You know why I love you? Did I say that? Oh, I meant it. I mean it. You're drunk. You're wild, candy. You're wild. That's why I love you. Let's get out of here before you decide you want to play the drums. That's not why you want to go. All closed for the night, yeah. <laughs> I have a man, his name is Candy. He loves me, and that's just dandy. What rhymes? Oh, pays the rent by selling brandy. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Oh, my big man knew everybody in that speakeasy. <laughs> but of course, I reckon in time, you know the governor himself. <laughs> Said the spider to the fly. Sleep warm, little lash. Aren't you gonna help a lady up? Honeymoon. Black honeymoon. Honeymoon just like a funeral. <laughs> With both of them? That's found in your eyes and not in one's weak and one's strong. Which one am I going to marry? Marry one in the church, other in your heart. That's bad. You're gonna get the misery. 
you're gonna get the blues. And when you feel it can't get any worse, it will. Now, what kind of a fortune is that to tell a girl? Pepper. Get up, sir. Maybe he thinks she's too good to associate with us. She won't be that way for long. Don't you listen good? I'm sorry, Candy. You listen good when I tell you something. I said I'm sorry. I told you keep her away from them. You think I'm kidding when I tell you something? Don't hit me, Candy. Nobody ever hit me before. Learn. <laughs> Learn good. Yes, Candy. I'll learn anything you want me to. I'll do anything for you. Even if you want me to be like them, I'd do it. You would? Oh, yes. I'd do it for you, Candy. Don't ever talk that way. Don't ever let me hear you talk that way. You're mine. You're my woman. My real one. The only. Do. They're all quiet like this. Like little boys all tired from playing games. <laughs> Listen, I think it's time you knew something about me. Time. Don't you want to know about me? Tell me when I get back. Oh, honey, don't go. Not tonight. It's important. Very important. I'll worry. Tell you what, your car is all fixed. I'll take it instead of mine. That way I'll be thinking about you. Don't you even want to know my name? Your name is Pepper. It's Temple. Temple Drake.
that was how you found me, tracing my car. And that was how you found Miss Reba's place. The daring rescue. Swift justice for the evil band of criminals. Justice for all save one. The return of the innocent, the ravaged maiden. Home from the ranks of the damned. Of course, it was a scandal, but scandals can be hushed. Particularly when they involve the daughter of someone very, very important. Particularly when the injured party, the innocent, might lose her good reputation. And hush it, you did, Daddy. The girl who stood there in your arms and didn't cry said to herself, well, here we are, and that's that. While all the time she was screaming under her skin for her first, last, lost lover. Temple, why? Why didn't you tell me the truth? Oh, what purpose would truth have served at that time? Would it have made us closer if I'd walked in the door and said, Oh, Daddy, I'm, I'm returning home from glorious captivity in a den of sin. I loved every minute of it, tore my heart out and handed it to a gentleman of, of questionable vocation and I'll never be satisfied again. No, I'll let you have your own way, all of you, including Gowan. Being the gentleman he was, he felt responsible. That was when he married you, wasn't it? About a month later. Well, he was surprised to the facts, all right, but not by me. I wasn't talking. By you, Dad. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, honeymoon in Paris, Temple. Do us both good to get away for a while. You don't have to marry me, Gowan. Again, I'll tell you, it's not have to, but want to. Why? Because you feel guilty? No. Because you pity me? Because I love you. And as far as what's happened, that's over. Water under the bridge. It is? You don't even know what happened. I know it was my fault. If I hadn't gotten drunk, you wouldn't have fallen in the hands of those people, been forced to... Gowan. Anyway, uh... Well, we'll make a new life together. Gowan, I wasn't forced. Uh, a, a new life together, and, and I promise you I'll do everything in my power to make it a good life. Gowan, I said I wasn't forced. Whatever happened will be forgotten, erased. Oh, it isn't that easy. But if you want it that way, we'll try. It was like a child. And what I felt for him wasn't love. It wasn't the thing I'd felt for candy. And so they were wed, and so Temple Drake was buried. And then the smart young gal Stevens went to Paris and had a fling. And then back to Jefferson and to the spanking new little wedding present house. And then Gowan's job with the state. And then babies. First Bucky. And then the other one. The gone one. Oh, my poor lost one. Five years that just go like that when you're doing all the right things. Right obstetrician and right pediatrician and right church, right pew, right address. Even the right social work. The right kind of do good. 
I'm, I'm rambling, I know it, but I, I, I just want you to get a clear picture, if you can, of how Nancy came back into the scene, into my life. As your daughter, I was naturally expected to be involved in social work. So about eight months ago, I was taking a group of girls on a tour of the state narcotics hospital. Some of the patients are with us for years. When they are certified as cured, they're discharged. Two, three months, they're addicted again and back with us. You mean there's no permanent cure? Oh, there's therapy, social rehabilitation, etc. Permanent cure. This is our laundry. These are patients. I suppose you could say we're teaching them a trade. But after we've discharged them, what are they going to do? Many of them have past experience as domestic servants. But would you take a known dope back into your home? The answer is obvious. So what is to become of them? Rejected, they will drift back into their old ways, their old companions, their old escapes from reality. I took Nancy out of the hospital next day as a nurse for the children. I told Gowan we should give her the chance for a new start in life. And like the do-gooder he was, he agreed. Without knowing, of course, exactly who she was. I had my own reason for wanting her. Oh, Bucky, don't do that. Put some pot on the baby to soothe his prickly heat. Oh, he's such a good boy. He's mighty easy to take care of. I'm not. No. My father says I'm very difficult. <laughs> well, you ain't gonna be any trouble to me, Bucky. Bucky, stop that. Just like candy. <laughs> Bucky, it's awful hot in here. Why don't you go out front and play? Ah. Uh. Go on. Hmm. Candy. <laughs> Told you I didn't want to talk about that. Talk about him. How about some lemonade? Sure, Mrs. Stevens. Oh, Nancy. Well, you remember that. You remember your name. You messed up once before. Are you going to try to do it again? All I want is a friend I can talk to. Look at what you have. A nice house, a husband, two fine boys, power. Yes, and you have friends. Oh, but don't you see, I can't talk to them. Some things don't need to be talked about. They're in the past, the dead, buried, the gone. Remember? It's cold, but it needs something. Dirty music and drinking in the afternoon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Remember when you sat around the table that afternoon? You were telling fortunes? Now you just put that out of your mind. Oh, and Candy came and caught me. <laughs> from the tongue and they're sung to a glorious end. You think I'm fixing to mess up my life again? Romance, romance. Oh, I almost wish I could. Sport? Hi. Nothing to do? Mom and Nancy are in the kitchen. Won't play with me or anything. Oh, that's tough. All they do is talk. Hmm. 
Remember those two dolls? Mr. Binford and Miss Reba. <laughs> Snuffling and yapping all the time. I hated those damn dogs. <laughs> I didn't expect you back so soon. Didn't you? You better go get dressed or we'll be late. Oh, oh my, I didn't know it was so late. Nancy, Bucky's by herself out front. Yes, Mr. Stevens. wonderful with those kids. Is that so? Mm. You know, she's had children of her own. Really? Who were their fathers? I don't see what that has to do with it. I know who she really is. Who? Well, we'll skip the drug addiction because I went along with that. Agreed with your idea that we give her a chance. I could even tolerate her time in jail. That could happen to anyone. Even the implication of a past history of prostitution. Until I checked into it. Arrested in a police raid on a certain Miss Reba's place. Well, now you know. You picked her. That's right. She was in on the whole thing. What thing, Gowan? All of it. Nancy was kind and understanding to me at a time when I needed kindness and understanding. I'm sure. Now you get rid of her. I mean this, Gowan. If she goes, so do I. Children. I think the reason she loves you so much is she lost her own baby, you know. Oh, you did. Mm -hmm. Confidentially, I think you're doing yourself some political good with this movie. Well, right, Gowan. Right. Word gets Different. around, you know. Fearless, democratic, progressive. Well, actually, it was more Temple's idea. Oh, now modesty is Gowan's little name. With all his other faults, he's the fairest man I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> so they arrived at the pearly gates and St. Peter came out and he said to them, How'd you like me all day? Oh, I don't mind if I do. No, no kidding. Is it true that you worked in one of those places? I wouldn't know. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, that's what I heard. Would you like a drink? Would it matter if she did? Of course not, honey. Honestly. Jack, it wouldn't matter to me. Some of our finest citizens would hate to face up under a microscope on that score. <laughs> you ought to know. Oh. <laughs> Man, talk about women gossip. As a matter of fact, for some technical advice. Hey, Randy. Come on in here, boy. Used to be sort of a hobby of old Randy. What do you want, buddy? Listen, that maid in there. You ever seen her before? Nope. Now, think real hard. When you were doing research back in your college days, the dives in Memphis, Atlanta, New Orleans, change the subject. Will you ever see her before? Man, I've seen a million. Anybody like a drink? In a strictly scientific sort of way, of course. I said, let's change the conversation. I meant it. Now, let's do it. No offense. Who are you offending you, Temple? No. You're not just bad humored, you're no humored. What am I supposed to do? Fall down laughing while my wife talks shop? Oh, Gowan, don't you think you're being just a bit of a prude? Maybe I am. But never hears to hear you sniggering with those idiots of a filth and illicit sex. Oh, there's a good solution. Only one I got. No, it isn't. 
let this thing fester in that black mind of yours until it's a wall between us. Somebody tells an off-color story and you close up like a fist. You're spilling my drink. I'll spill every drink you ever pour if it'll make you drop this charade you insist we play month in, month out. What's done is done. Oh, Nancy, you can go home. I'll see you in the morning. Yes, Miss Stevens. You say what's done is done. Shall we drop it? Nothing is done. Life isn't that simple. I don't want to talk. Talk about it? Well, I say let's talk about it. Talk about it and talk about it until it's all out in the open. Until it bores us. Until we couldn't care less. Oh, Gowan, we can't go on like this. A hundred times sooner you divorce me. There'll be no divorce. Then let me go. Let me live alone. I'm not going to divorce you, and I'm not going to leave you. or have you leave me. Because it was all my fault, and I know it, and none of it was your fault. But it was. That's what I keep trying to tell Shut you. Shut up! I don't want to hear anything about that, about it, about him. Why? Because you forgive me? I've told you a hundred times there's nothing to forgive. If anything, it's for you to forgive me. Now, if you'd just kindly leave me alone, I'd like to get some sleep. Gowan, please talk with me, because don't you see it's all past and dead, or it would be dead if only you'd Simple, listen... I'm not fooling about this. Now, you shut up and act like the lady you're supposed to be and go on up to bed. But if you'd listen, maybe you'd say, all right, that's it, and it's over, and I forgive you. I don't want to forgive you. Well, if you'd just get your foot out of this door, I'd like a little privacy. Oh, it's a snarl, isn't it? You can't stand me as I am, and I can't be what I'm not. I'll be right over. Yes. children I've been running I've been dodging and I'm back and nothing's changed nothing no. Pepper Pepper Candy Candy oh I can't help it I can't I can't I couldn't help it. I couldn't help myself. Is this necessary? Governor told her to tell the truth, the whole truth, no holding back. I'm sorry, Temple. You know something else, Daddy? During the trial, I kept saying to myself, supposing you do get up there and have to tell the truth, what'll it do to your father's career? 
Oh, I was always very good at justifying things. You left this man and went home. In the morning. Mr. Stevens taken Bucky and left the baby. Told Bucky they was going to Grandma's on a fishing trip. Oh, so he knows. Man's wife stays out all night. He's bound to go hunting for her. Now, he must have known you were over my house last night. Maybe he came over there and heard your voices. I told you he was going to mess things up. You told me. I told you. I don't want you here today. I won't be needing you. I couldn't help myself. Can you help yourself now? Five years he's been running and hiding. For five years I thought he was dead. And all that time he's been wanting me and needing me. Little girl, little girl. Don't you know your candy man? Don't you know why he's come back here? I used to think those others were dumb and easy. But you are the easiest touch that man has ever put his hand on. I've told you to go home. You gonna live off of you here or someplace else? Everything's going to be all right. Can you kiss me? Hold me? Beg me. Please. Let's get rolling. everything? Yeah, as soon as I pack. My jewelry case, too. I should leave some sort of note for Gowan. Leave it on. Oh, but it's Gowan's belong to his grandmother. When I buy a new one, we'll send it back. This... Gowans, too? Yes. Baby, I got to teach you about life, outside world. You fixing to take him or leave him here? I thought I gave you the day off. You gonna take him or leave him? Leave him, a little baby? Of course. You can't. Not with nobody. You can no more leave a little baby with nobody while you're running away from your husband with another man than you can take that baby on the trip with you. Nancy. Now that's what I'm talking about. Well, I am taking him. Well, maybe taking him will be just as easy. At least to the first time you write your paw, Mr. Garwin, for money. Nancy, hush! Don't talk that way. You'll have your writing for money. Yo, candy man. And when they don't send it just as quick as he thinks they ought to, he gonna throw you and the baby both out. Then you can throw it in a garbage can or put it in an orphanage. It won't be no more trouble to you or anybody else because by that time you would have gotten rid of the both of them. Wake up, junkie. You're a talking jag. Hit me again, candy man. I don't care. Just as long as it saves that little baby in there. You knew I'd have to take it, didn't you? You knew all you'd have to do was put it there. Leave it there so I could see those little white packages. Farewell from an old friend. You want me to read that child's cards for the future? When you were sitting around the table talking to those girls, did you ask him about their children? Children? They had them at one time or another, just like I did. I don't care. I don't care. I'm, I'm not them, not you, not scum. Oh, Nancy, I'm sorry. You've always been so good to us, trying to keep together a marriage that never should have been. I don't know that yet. And I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you going to do it? I'm going to do it now. Money or no money? Money or no money now? Children or no children? 
If you can do it, you can say it. Children are no children. Now, will you please get out of here? Hard everything I know. You can see that. Nancy? I've hushed. What are you going to do? I'm going to ready him for his journey. Listen good. We've got the candy man here to protect you. Remember? Yeah, I remember. Let's go. vanished. They stuck her in jail and put her on trial. Convicted her and sentenced her to hang today by the neck until she's dead. And all the time she never said a word except thank you, Lord. you want me to do? Grant her pardon. The woman committed the crime and confessed it openly, without excuse or defense. But the guilt was mine. It was mine when I, when I could have run away from Miss Rebus and I didn't. Mine when I went to Gowan without truth between us. Mine when I didn't turn Candy away, and mine when I brought Nancy back into it. But it was hers when she killed my grandson. What you ask is beyond my power. Ira knows that. Then why have you brought me here, dragging me through the mire I've spent six years trying to conceal? For just that. To wipe the slate clean of six years of lies and deception and start afresh. Nancy chose to sacrifice herself, to save your marriage, to keep it intact that your son might live the way children are meant to live. Accept it. Let me go see you. Yes. Goodbye, Daddy. Oh, I gotta hand it to you, cousin. I surely do. It was whiskey, wasn't it? Well, a toast. A toast to meddlesome old woman lawyers and do-gooders whose good deeds fail. I'll ignore the meddlesome part and the do-gooders part. 
But I want you to know it wasn't all failure tonight. No? You mean Nancy lives? Justice is not done. I've been a lawyer too long to ever be sure about justice. But out of what happened tonight could come a new beginning for you. It's too late for beginnings. Not if you're the man I think you are. Not if you've got the moral courage to accept the truth as she has. How long have you been married? Six years. And you don't know her? I'll never know her. Not unless you free her. Free her by standing with her to face the past. Face your own weakness. Face your own evasion. Sure. As the good book says, and the truth shall set you free. I've never been fortunate enough to find the right woman for me. But just imagine the luxury of having one person on this earth to whom you could always speak the truth. That would be my concept of a true marriage. Good night, Gowan. And the truth shall set you free. Mrs. Stevens. I opened that window so she could have a little air. You been to see your father? I told him everything. Little girl, don't you know I give up this life back there in that courtroom? It was before that even. In your house that day when I lifted my hand to that child. Hush. I can't. But you had to suffer through the telling of it. She was suffering for something. I don't know why it is. Maybe it's because we're too stubborn to learn any other way. But that's the way we get salvation. Salvation? I guess that's what we're all looking for, isn't it? Something to make us feel safe place to hide. Oh, but we each look for it in such strange places. You still want that candor, man? No. No. Of course you don't. That's because you're stronger now. And salvation means more than just hiding. It's a facing up to your life. Your life with your husband and your son. With your children to come. Why can't we just pay for our own mistakes? Why must you and, and my little baby and Gowan suffer for something I did such a long time ago? Ain't nothing we do that don't affect everybody around us. You've just got to believe. Believe that all this means something believe that there is forgiveness, just like I believe that I've been forgiven. Can you ever forgive me? Do you have to ask that? In a little while, I'll be in a place where this earth will seem like no more than a dream that didn't matter. My little baby will be waiting for me, too. And mine, Nancy, mine. That one, too. In heaven, that child remembers nothing of my hands but gentleness because I loved that baby. Even when I raised my hand against it. Time's up. Goodbye, Nancy. Oh, 
Nancy, I'm scared. Believe. Just believe. Come along now, Mrs. Stevens. 